Hey baby tweets, it's Papa Tweet. Welcome back. So previously we talked about this little guy here. This is the Archer M Plus, and this is the first access native 2.4 gigahertz receiver that has hit the market. And everybody was wanting a direct competitor to this guy, the ever popular RXSR, mostly due to the size and the fact of it doesn't have diversity is why people are looking for the replacement for this guy, or at least the, the inline competitor to this guy here. This is a great receiver, it's nice and small, ideal for micro builds. Well, finally, FR Sky has sent out this guy. This is the Archer RS. This is the direct competitor for this guy. This is a access native 2.4 gigahertz receiver. And it's supposed to have all the features of this plus some other very large benefits. So let's take a closer look. So first thing you can see, we'll talk about the size comparison. So let's look at the Archer RS versus the Archer M Plus. The footprint is pretty much identical, except for now we do have diversity. We do lose a couple nice things like the nice, uh, so you have this nice big button here to initiate the registration process. And instead on the Archer RS, we have the little tactile membrane switch. Obviously this is a lot easier to get your meat hooks on than this guy, but we should only need to hit that button one time. Um, and then let's bring the RXSR over here. So obviously you can see there is a big difference between these two and the RXSR. The footprint is in general the same, except for the RXSR always comes with this pin connection. Uh, a lot of people do de-pin these things, but that is a real, a real bear to do. And obviously on the Archer series, these are direct solder only. So let's go ahead and set this guy aside. All right, so the Archer RS. Um, again, first real quad oriented receiver from FR Sky that is access 2.4 gigahertz native. This does support uh, S bus and F port like you would expect. Um, it also has inverted S port. You don't have to go and look for a, a pad on the backside to scab to. Um, it has FLR, which is frame loss rate, which is a new feature to the access line. Over the air firmware flashing, which is, which is something we've been wanting forever. Um, it only weighs 1.3 grams, runs off five volts only at about 60 milliamps. Um, again, like I said, this is access only, and you're gonna need ISRM version 2.1.0 or higher. So if you're one of those folks that are running D16 receivers on your access radio, um, D16 with receivers that aren't FR Sky branded receivers and you can't update the firmware on those, you're gonna have to flash firmware back and forth uh, on your internal module, which isn't that big of a deal and it's actually pretty quick and easy to do. But just remember, if you're one of those guys using D16 on non FR Sky branded receivers, you will have to uh, update your internal radio module on your transmitter to make this guy work. And when this comes to market, it should be about $20, uh, $20 US that is. But obviously prices and availability do fluctuate. All right, so I hope everybody can see that. All right, so let's talk about the pads from the top down. So this is your ground pad here, your, your five volts in there. Um, this is your S port wire, inverted S port. If you're using a F3 flight controller, go ahead and connect to here. If you're using F4 and F7, connect this to any unused UART TX pad you have on your flight controller. And this one here is gonna be uh, S bus out. So this is your RC control link if you're not doing F port. Remember F port is the mixture of S port and F S bus all on one wire. And again, remember that goes to a, uh, a UART TX pad. And this bottom one here is S bus in. So this can be run in a redundancy mode. So you could have a receiver here with your S bus out going to your S bus in and then S bus out of this into your flight controller. So you do have receiver redundancy in case this one loses signal or this one, they can work in tandem together. These pads here, uh, I've asked uh, my rep over at FR Sky and these are 
These are nothing to the end user. These are for internal testing and programming. Uh, as you can see here, the MCU has been obfuscated like most companies are doing now uh, to protect their intellectual property. The antennas here, these use the IPEX Gen 4 connectors. So they are the really small connectors, um, not like the large ones that we used to use in the past. So just keep that in mind if you do have to order replacement antennas. Which brings me into another topic of this is the antennas are very easily replaceable. Just very carefully pop these up and they will come right off and you can replace them. But remember, these are very, very, very small pads. So you gotta be extremely gentle that you don't break these off of the board. Um, this one I received, and remember this is just a review of a sample of one. Didn't really come with a whole lot of Celastic mounting the antennas onto the board like this guy did or most other receivers that I get. Um, they're usually just glopped down with this orange stuff, which is extremely good at adhesive. Um, I kind of see that as a good and a bad. Typically, if you got a ton of this gunk on here and you're trying to remove it, you'll end up damaging the board or you could easily damage the board trying to remove that. Whereas these, they're pretty easy to take off. I'm not too worried about these popping off in a crash, but I don't know, it's kind of a mixed bag. You can see there is a little bit on there, but it's not a lot. They definitely um, stopped just caking these on. But then again, this is just one receiver. So there may be, there may be changes in the future. So the bare minimum amount of connections we're gonna need to, need to make is gonna be our ground, our five volts and our S bus out, which is going to be, will be this guy here. So this ground five volts and our S bus connection right there. So that is the bare minimum we'll need to get a quad up and flying with this particular receiver. Okay, so let's go through the binding process. So first thing we need to do is we need to check the software on our radio. Now this is the X9 Lite S. This will apply to all the 2019 access, access enabled radios. Buttons may be different, menus may look a little different, but the process is the same. So we're gonna get into our main menu here. First we're gonna do is check our OpenTX version. We have, at the time of recording this, 2.3.9, uh, the build date of 6-14-2020. Go ahead and shut your radio off. On this radio, I'm gonna hold the two trim switches in and tap the power button. We're gonna check our bootloader version and we have version uh, 2.3.9. We wanna make sure that these match. And they do, so we're good. If not, please refer to this video up here on how to properly set up your radio out of the box. Okay, so now we know we have an updated version of OpenTX and I would not try this on the version that comes with your radio. Those are probably development builds and they are missing a lot of functionality. Next thing we need to do is we need to check the firmware of our ISRM. That is our internal radio module inside this transmitter. There's two pieces of software. OpenTX is the operating system and the ISRM firmware is what runs the actual Thing that sends the radio waves in and out of this thing. So back into our main menu, scroll over to modules and RX version, go ahead and hit that. And oh no, it both says off. What's that all about? It's because I have a model select that is not using the internal RF. If this is off, it actually powers down the internal module and you can't check any of the software on it. So we either need to enable that or we need to pick a different model. And I know this one has the ISRM enabled, as you can see right here. Have it enabled as access. So back into our main menu and go ahead and scroll on over. Modules and RX version. And we want to make sure that this says 2.1.0. Here's a FCC or LBT. It depends on what part of the world you live in. Remember these radios are region locked. If you bought an EU radio, it's gonna be LBT. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. And I'm just gonna create a new profile for this receiver because I've never bound to it. So I'm just gonna create one real quick. Bear with me.
Okay, so here's the big deal here. We're gonna change internal RF mode to access. You should also see ACCST D16. We're not gonna worry about that one. We want access. Now I created a whole new model for this receiver, but you don't need to do that. You, you can register three different receivers to each model. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna select register, and I'm gonna connect my receiver to a five volt power supply. Uh, this is just on the S-Port Air Linker, and that's just for demonstration purposes. Um, if you had this in your quad, you would just power up your quad. And go ahead and connect. And nothing happened. The reason why nothing happened is we need to hold down the register button, this little membrane switch on the back of the receiver, while we power it on. And there we go. We now see our registration ID, which receiver number, and it's the name is RS. But hit enter, registration is successful. Now here we need to disconnect the receiver again. Go down to receiver one or whatever receiver out of the three you want to put it on. Hit bind and go ahead and just connect power to the receiver. And it should automatically start the bind process. And there we are, RS. Bind successful, click OK. Now we can long hold on that and go to options. And we have a bunch of different options in here. If you're gonna run F port, which is remember, that's S port telemetry and S bus RC link all on one wire, you have to come down here and select F port. And that will program this to output in an F port protocol. And we can disable telemetry, uh, 25 milliwatt telemetry and seven millisecond PWM. Uh, I'm gonna leave these all the way they are for now. Next thing we need to do is scroll on over to our telemetry page. Now the first thing we need to do is with new Archer receivers, we need to change our low and critical alarms. And FR Sky recommends low to be set to 35 and critical to be set to 32. All right, next thing we need to do is discover new sensors. And you should always get at least three of these with the new Archer system. Whether you have it hooked up to a quad, a model, um, S port telemetry or not, you will get these three. RSSI is obviously it's RSSI. RX bat, that's how much voltage is at the receiver, or what the receiver's detecting. And VFR is valid frame rate. And that's it. We can exit out of here. Uh, next thing you need to do is go back in your model and you have got to set up a fail safe. And for typical quad pilots, your fail safe is gonna be no pulses. Okay, so now that we have a receiver bound, one of the big, big advantages of all the new access enabled receivers, uh, and I'm talking about the new hardware, not the old stuff, is over the air firmware flashing. So let's check this out. If you go to FR Sky's website and go to the downloads page, find your receiver, you will find new firmware for your receiver. Maybe this one, maybe other receivers, but all the OTA ones that's over the air reprogramming, that is, that's where you find the firmware. Take that firmware file and put it on your SD card, put it into your radio, cook your radio up to your PC, transfer it that way, however you do it, but you gotta get that file into your radio. So we're gonna hold down the menu key and we're gonna come over to the SD card contents and it pays to actually structure your SD card contents in a logical way. So I put all my firmwares in the firmware folder. And for all my receivers, I have RX for TX, that's for the transmitters, ISRM firmware for the internal transmitters. You know, it's it makes sense to me. So I'm gonna go into RX and I made a folder for Archer RS. And here is the firmware I have for the Archer RS. Long hold on that. And flash receiver by internal OTA. Um, and you can still do it S port the old way with power ground and your S your S port wire. We're gonna do over the air. And that requires you to disconnect power to your receiver and go ahead and reconnect it. That's the receiver we wanna flash. Current version is 211 and we're gonna hit enter. 
And now we wait. Obviously, if you were doing this, it would probably be inside of a model, which is great because we still don't have to get to that registration button anymore. It's a one and done thing. Unless you change radios and you don't happen to have your old radio with you, then you'll have to get to it again. But that's a pretty one-off case. Flashing is complete. And you notice it looks like we lost our bind. Let's go ahead and disconnect and reconnect. And there we go, we should be good to go. We have our RSSI bars that tells us we are connected to this receiver. And another thing that's nice about the OTA receivers, the new generation of Access Hardware, is if you go to your main menu, scroll back over to the versions tab, go down to modules and RX version. If you're bound to a receiver, it will tell you what version of the firmware is on there. This is great days for us FR Sky folks. Um, so that is the basics of how to get this receiver up and running with your access enabled radio. All right, folks, I know this is a really long video, but I, I wanted to make it long and full length just so you know exactly how to set this stuff up. I'll be doing some range tests. I've been doing range tests. I have a neat little contraption I've set up. I've strapped it to other drones and flown them way out, way past where your FPV range will be. And my initial testings, this receiver is really, really good. Uh, initially, I'm getting the same range out of the Archer RS as I was getting out of the TBS Crossfire and FR Sky R9 systems at 100 milliwatts. Yeah, it's pretty darn impressive. And the valid frame rate thing, that's pretty cool. I think it kind of acts a little bit like LQ with Crossfire, but a little more testing needs to be done on that. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out. Hey, if you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you're planning on purchasing any FPV related gear, check out the affiliate links in the bottom of the video. Um, all that stuff helps me out and it justifies me continuing doing what I'm doing. All right, folks, I'll see you around. Bye.